Hey, thanks for joining us. We're going to do the ladies top 10 2019 games. Hello and welcome to Tantrum House Studio 3. I'm Katie. I'm Sarah. And I'm Melissa. Now the guys already did their top 10, but I'm sure ours is going to be better. Let us know whose list you like the best, the guys, the ladies, or maybe a specific person. And let's get started. Number 10. So my number 10 is Lantern's Dice. Um, I really enjoyed the original Lanterns and I really looked forward to doing the Lanterns dice. Um, it is got some dice chucking and then everybody is working from that to build their own little floating lantern area on a like roll and write style. Um, so I really enjoy the um, trying to get things to fit in and how you're going to cover um, new things to get things done and make extra points and um, I can get a little bit AP with this one um, but I think it's a lot of fun and it's easy to get into. Yeah I really enjoy Lantern's Dice as well. It, it's probably one of my honorable mentions didn't quite make it onto my top 10 but I enjoy what you're doing in the game. I think I liked it more than Katie because it may be higher up on my list. <laughs> <laughs> my number 10 is Era. This one you is it, actually kind of a roll and write feel, which I think is part of the reason I like it. Um, you're rolling dice and trying to use those dice to gain resources to then build buildings on your player grid. Um, there, a few things that probably would have made it a little higher for me, um, making the boards a little nicer, and then um, uh, there, I think later in the game, sometimes it becomes difficult, or you have dice that you may not use as much later on for certain resources. Um, so I think those things made it a little lower on my list. Really enjoyed it though. Mm -hmm. So I and it's one that I felt the puzzle of putting those buildings in in a space that makes sense and then trying to get um, other bonuses off of them at the end of the game for certain buildings. Enjoyed this one. Yeah, I enjoy this one too. It has maybe a little bit more player interaction than I like, especially since Sarah kept like scorching my earth yep. and then <laughs> there was like yeah. a fire or something and it got rid of my building. So. Yeah, that wasn't my favorite part. <laughs> so my top 10 is, number 10 is Tapestry. And before you run away, I know <laughs> this is a kind of a controversial game. People either love it or hate it. The things I like about Tapestry is the discovery and the personal puzzleness of how do I make the civilization that I have and the tapestry cards that I draw work the best for me and sometimes those work really really well together and it's awesome and other times you have to adjust your plans and try to figure out how to best use what you have. So those are the parts of tapestry that I really like. Number nine. So my number nine is uh, 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 Zombicide Invader. Um, this is a game that Ryan and I really enjoy playing together and any game that we can play together and both really enjoy is a definite plus for us. Um, this is probably our most favorite in the Zombicide series. Um, we think they made a lot of good changes and a lot of um, fun interesting changes just to make it um, different enough from the regular Zombicides that it, it feels like a game that seems familiar, but is one that is different enough that you want to play it. So we have really enjoyed Zombicide Invader. That's one I haven't gotten to the table yet. Yeah, as I was gonna say, you want me to move it so that we can even <laughs> see you, Sarah? Uh, my number nine we've all played, mm -hmm. and it is The Magnificent. Mm -hmm. This is one that I don't think is on a lot of people's radar. Um, it came out a little bit later in the year, I believe. I think it was an Essen release. Yeah. 
and in the game you are dice drafting and then using those dice to do action selection on cards and then those cards also have a second use and one of them will score at the end of the round something specific and uh, it has a um, entertainment um, kind of circusy theme to it um, super love the gameplay like there are lots of levels of what you are doing mm -hmm. and how to gain certain items and tile laying in it. I, I loved all the little bits of it. Uh, the artwork wasn't as um, magnificent for me. Um, it I understand the avant-garde type era art, but I think the text was a little hard to read on some of the cards mm -hmm. and the illustrations were okay for me. So I think had the art been wow had a wow factor to it i think this would be higher on my list because the gameplay was amazing yeah i actually really did enjoy this as well there were a few things for me that that bumped it down just far enough where it didn't quite make my list but um i still did really enjoy this game i might be talking about this one a little later <laughs> <laughs> so my number nine is beta colony and this is by rio grande games from the designer duo of Matt Riddle and Ben Pinchback, and they've designed a lot of games together. It's kind of a space colonizing theme where part of your action is going around sort of a rondelle aspect of um, uh, action selections. There are dice and the everyone has the same value of dice and you move certain spaces and have your uh, power of your action based on the pip value of those dice. And then you're taking these tiles and putting them down in different colonies to get resources and to get points. And I just enjoyed the puzzle aspect of the game. I will say that some of the graphic design choices and art choices, I think, make the game something that people aren't going to really stop and look at on a shelf or the table presence isn't quite there for it. So I think it's under a lot of people's radar because of the aesthetic with so many beautiful games out right now. Mm -hmm. Number eight. So my number eight is Cartographers. It is a roll and write, well, not really roll and write, it's a write. Flip and, right. flip and write card flip, flip and, and fill it's flip a flip and, and fill. flip and fill um i thought this one was a lot of fun because i loved that you had several different options to choose from as you're um using the cards to fill your areas um also really loved I, I played this with Sarah and we had a fun time drawing in our little monsters on each other's pages and then getting our pages back going, oh, look at this monster, look at the monster she drew on mine. Um, and it was just a ton of fun just to see um, how people chose to fill in their different things. There is a little bit of player interaction, which I don't see a lot in different roll and writes, mm -hmm. um, but the, the interaction of choosing where you're going to try to mess somebody up with the, the monster placement um, was really fun. Um, and so for me, it just gave enough player interaction that it kept things a little spicy and it made it really interesting and fun for me. So yeah, I um, <laughs> almost put this one on my list. Honorable mention again. Um, <laughs> but Sarah and I just did a top 10 roll and rights video. So I didn't put any roll and rights on my list so you can check out that other video to see which ones i really enjoyed we'll put a link up in the top my number eight is tiny towns this one has come to the table a lot this year mm -hmm. um, i love the puzzle of trying to fit the pieces in to try and gain points you have to go with whatever comes up because you aren't the one choosing what goes on your board unless it is your turn and you're the master builder mm -hmm. so you have to use what other people choose for you and that puzzle of trying to fit everything in and gain points from it uh, I really, really like it. I think this probably could have been, it's almost a roll and write again. It I, is similar. I similar love the, the mechanic of your, everybody has the same information and what do you do with that information mm -hmm. to get the outcome of the winner. So 
enjoyed Tiny Towns this year. Yeah, me too. <laughs> it, it might be on my list later. <laughs> <laughs> so my number eight is Letter Jam. This is a cooperative word game, which there aren't many of you those. <laughs> um, this is something where people who are really into word games and have really large vocabularies can still play with people who don't because you're all working together giving each other clues it's kind of like hanabi where you can't see what letter you have mm -hmm. and other people are giving clues spelling things out so you can try to fill in that blank to figure out what your letter is we've played this with my family we played it with large groups um I demo a lot for CGE, and almost everyone has really enjoyed Letter Jam. Yep, I agree. This one is an honorable mention for me. Yeah, it. I found it is a little bit different to play with kids because they're like, I got a three-letter word. I'm like, all right, you got anything else? <laughs> <laughs> like, can we go? Can we go a little bit past that? Or I found the the text generation wants to use some weird abbreviations that are common in text language, and I'm like. You can't do that. That's, <laughs> that's not an actual word. It's and so that helpful. can really it's throw... It's actually not helpful either. I know. It really throws everything mm -hmm. off. So <laughs> yeah, I found that to be a little bit of a nuisance. <laughs> yeah, I do it love is it, really fun. though, when someone gives a really clever clue that mm -hmm. really, really helps. Like Kevin did Montana once, oh, and that was oh, really wow. helpful. Good job, Kevin. <laughs> Number seven. So my number seven on my list is Mountaineers by Massive Games. Massive? Massive. Yes. <laughs> um, and this was a really fun game. It has a really fun table presence and then it's got this big 3D mountain that, I mean, sits up like this tall on the table. Um, and it's a lot of fun because you're um, trying to fulfill secret goals and I really love this like trying to puzzle together the secret goals that you're trying to do and you're trying to climb this mountain hit different um, terrains um, having to deal with weather changes buying gear um, there are just a lot of things about this game that I thought were really fun um, and really enjoyed and I, I do often think like oh when can I play that again <laughs> So I have really enjoyed this one. This is one that Ryan hasn't gotten to play, which is really sad. So um, we may play that this afternoon. <laughs> this one, I think it feels like a almost three-dimensional ticket to ride to me. Yeah, like you have kind of spaces you're trying to get to. And it's not necessarily a specific space. Like it's just this type of area or some of them are specific. Yeah. But working three-dimensionally to see where you Across need to go. Mountain. Turn yeah. the mountain so I can Turn, see. Yeah, rotate the mountain so I can see where I need to go. Yeah. So that's super fun. I enjoyed this one too. I think a lot of people don't necessarily enjoy the mountain is a little fiddly to put together. Mm -hmm. um, there are some hacks to be able to do it a little bit easier with some rubber bands and stuff. Um, had that fit together, especially the four-sided mountain, mm -hmm. I think probably would have made it on my list as well. Yeah. So, Mountaineers. So, my number seven is Cartographers. Um, we just talked about it for number eight with Katie. Um, one thing I enjoy about it is the slightly unique scoring method. It has four different things you're going to score in A, B, C, and D. And for round one, you're going to score A and B. And then round two, you score B and C. Mm -hmm. And then C and D. And then D and A. And so you have to plan ahead on what you're gaining to try and not only just gain something, gain specific points that round, but then know that I don't need to build any more of this later on. So um, I, I like the scoring mechanism for cartographers. Yeah, yeah. that is fun. That's one of my favorite things about it too. Uh, my number seven, I didn't bring the box because it's massive, but Clank Legacy. And this is Clank with the campaign legacy aspect, there's this whole book of secrets with Ooh. little uh, <laughs> paragraphs that you read, there's stickers, there's boxes, there's all sorts of things that you unlock. The game comes with miniatures that you're moving around the board. We're actually about four games into the legacy campaign, so we're not all the way through yet, but I've enjoyed 
uh, seeing how things progress. The board at the beginning has a lot of blank space in it and you're adding stickers to it. Uh, I'm always torn between do I go after the artifact and get the points or do I go to that space where I know that I'm going to be able to read something and maybe it'll be <laughs> awesome or maybe it won't be that awesome. Yeah. But that sense of mystery yeah. and just like what's going to happen really kind of draws me in each time. And also a cool thing is you are building up your characters. You're getting some new cards for your deck and unique powers to make it asymmetrical. So I've enjoyed Clank Legacy. Number six. So my number six is Town Builder Kvorden. Um, I had a great time reading all of these different cards and trying to build my town. It's, it's a card drafting system um, and you're trying to build up this town. And I really just loved that all of the cards were different and they really just showed this, this neat aspect of how you could build your town. We fought over the cheese cart um, <laughs> when we played. We just, it was exciting to me to see um, how to build up your town. And at the end, we all like announced what our town was at the end. Like, oh, here's what I have in my town. And um, you've got set collection in there. I, I do really like set collection. So it's fun um, building the town up um, collecting the sets and um, really in just in general I just had a great time playing it um, and I just really think it's a fun um, game that is pretty easy to get into it's really not that complicated so it's fun to play even with some of our um, family members who aren't really gamers but do kind of enjoy some of the aspects of gaming and um, it was just really a fun game to get into. So my number six is Parks from Keymaster. Um, this is a um, game where you have a hiker going on a trail and you can't go backwards on the trail. You always have to keep going forward. And so you need to pick up specific resources on the way and then you can use those to visit a specific real life park. Um, and I, the components are, and the artwork just knock it out of the park. Um, it's literally, yes, <laughs> uh, yes, they, they did an absolutely fantastic job at Keymaster of, of putting together a very stunning visual. Oh, game. it is very visually stunning. Agreed. Yeah. Um, they used artwork from the 59 Park series. So if you're not familiar with that, go ahead and check that out. That is artists that were commissioned all over the US to make art specific for all of our national parks. Mm -hmm. uh, the gameplay is great. I've played with gamers and non-gamers and everyone has enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the I, I love the set collection in this one of trying to gain the, re well it's not really set collection, gaining the resources so then you can visit the parks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really loved it. I agree with everything that you said. <laughs> so maybe this one's also an honorable mention, yeah. <laughs> like every game. <laughs> so my number six is one that has already been talked about. So it's The Magnificent from Aporta Games. And some of the things that I specifically enjoyed was deciding which dice to draft because the colors and the pit values matter for different mm -hmm. aspects of the game. And then at the end of the round, you have to pay coins depending on your largest value of a specific color. And there are some wild dice that also add to that. So you have to think through, do I want to take this really, really powerful action because I can add all the same color dice together, but will I have enough money to pay for it because I'm going to yeah. lose points. Yeah. And one of the rounds I lost about three or four points because I didn't quite have enough. But I really did enjoy The Magnificent. Number five. So my number five is It's a Wonderful World. Um, this is by Lucky Duck Games and Ori Games. Um, and it is a town building set collection card drafting. Card drafting um, Tableau building. Yeah, I was going to say, there's all sorts of um, things going on in this game. Um, and it's really neat to me that um, 
there's like these sort of like you see on the, the box cover there's kind of these two sides of the city and you can really focus in one or you could spread out across each and um, I had a great time playing with it. Um, I like that there's like a specific order that you get your resources in because you you build up the cards, you get resources based on the cards that you finished and um, those resources are given to you at a specific um, interval and so you get like maybe the gray ones first and then you're able to use those resources to then purchase another card that may give you more resources later on um, in that same round which I think is just very interesting it made me have to really think about what cards I'm keeping and what will I be able to build if I build this one first then I'll immediately get to build this one very very next and then it just kind of becomes this domino effect um, that I thought was really interesting to have to think through the processes of that so really enjoyed it this one's an honorable mention for me I think if I had played it a couple more times it definitely would have made my top 10 mm -hmm. um, I enjoyed that everyone has a unique goal that they're going towards mm -hmm. and so it kind of helps everybody diversify and not take the same types of buildings yes. um, but yeah I, I love that it's reminiscent of seven wonders which is one of my all-time favorite games mm -hmm. Um, but it's a next step beyond yeah. Seven Wonders with trying to gain resources, too. Yeah, this is also an honorable mention for me, and I was going to say that I think I enjoy it better than Seven Wonders. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. Hard choice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is, my number five is Lantern's Dice. Katie already talked about this one. Uh, it... I love that they took the Lanterns game and they did a very good roll and write with it. Um, and it's not just roll and write, uh, there are, there's tile laying with it. Mm -hmm. So it's one of the few roll and writes where you have additional components that go with um, just marking on your paper. Um, this one has chaining, st chaining things and gaining more item or uses uh, through gaining lanterns or building on pavilions. And then um, it has some fun scoring at the end. Mm -hmm. So definitely my number five. <laughs> so my number five is the Artemis Project from Grand Gamers Guild. And I really do like dice placement, dice mm -hmm. uh, games. This one, one of my favorite things is that each area of the board resolves a different way. So one area you're going to want high dice and another place you're going to want lower dice. And so it's not like, oh, I rolled some ones and twos. My whole turn is going to be uh, just terrible. So I like the puzzle aspect of how do I best use my dice to get the resources and the people that I need, the buildings. There's a little bit of player interaction to uh, the group I play with isn't too mean, so I haven't felt like <laughs> <laughs> But maybe some groups could be a little mean with that. Um, and then also, if you can't use an action with a die or you get bumped out, there is a consolation. You go up another track and you're still getting something for that die. So it's not like I just wasted my whole turn. Mm -hmm. yeah. Number four. So my number four is Era. Sarah has already talked about this, so I'll, I'll keep it kind of short, but one of the things that I really loved was the fact that you choose what dice you start adding to your pool that you roll, and then you have to pay for the amount of dice that you're rolling. Um, because you think, oh, I can do more if I get more dice, but then you suddenly are like, well, now I'm just really, really poor. I need more wheat than I'm I have the ability to roll and as she said there are dice that are really useful at the beginning and then aren't as useful at the end um, and that part actually appeals to me because then I have to really think about this is really useful now but later it's just gonna be something I have to pay for um, so I really like that how am I gonna do this kind of feel so yeah my number four is Miyabi from Hava. This one is a tile laying game that 
Ha it's It's got nice artwork. It has a decent table presence. Everyone has their own garden they are trying to build. Mm -hmm. um, it has five different um, mini expansion modules so you can score it differently even though you play the game the same way. Mm -hmm. That appeals to me a lot because you can mix it up and change it up. It's one that is easy enough rules so my kids can play with me and actually possibly beat me. Oh, that's and, good. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but still, uh, you draft tiles uh, each turn and place them in your garden. There's very specific places that they're allowed to go and you're trying to build the most beautiful garden. So. so this one's on my bucket list for 2019. We just recorded a live video of that. I have not played it yet, but I think I would really, really enjoy it because I love tile laying mm -hmm. and all of those interesting scoring options as well. I'll play it with you, Melissa. Oh, I haven't played it yet. We'll, we'll, we'll do it together. So my number four is a game that I don't have to show. It is Edge of Darkness by AEG. And it takes the card crafting of Mystic Veil vale and bumps it up 500 notches. Oh, it, wow. has, um, card, yeah. it has card crafting, it has a little bit of worker placement, it has this cube tower that you're placing cubes in to see which monsters attack. And then the really interesting thing is you are drafting and getting cards into your deck that may belong to other people. So when you play them, you're giving a benefit to someone else. So you really Whoa. have to choose wisely. Do I get that awesome card that's going to help Kevin, or do I try to get my own card? So I really enjoy the choices this in one, Edge of Darkness. This one has been on my list all year, and I just never got to play it. So, <laughs> <laughs> Number three. So my number three is... Wingspan. Um, this was hugely popular this year. Um, people just really flocked to it. <laughs> <laughs> um, it is absolutely gorgeous with card art and um, I really, really loved that there was information about the birds as you were playing. You could, mm -hmm. I sat there reading like, oh, did you know? And I would tell everybody what was on the bottom of my cards. Um, it, it's really fun. I, I love the gameplay. I love the beauty of it. Uh, it's really a simple game to get into. It has nice components and just, I, I just going to go with like tons of people love it. So, uh, I think it's something that a lot of different people can really enjoy together. So, yeah. My number three is a game that I heard lots of buzz at Essen this year. I heard people talking about it and I was like, I should probably go check that game out. It's about painting in the run during the Renaissance. Like that seems, uh, being a former art teacher, that seems up my alley, is Florenza. Uh, this isn't necessarily available in the U.S. yet. I'm hoping somebody will bring it over. It, it probably would have been my one of my top roll and write games this year. Um, if you notice, I like a lot of roll and writes. Uh, <laughs> this this one was difficult to learn. Um, I do have to say the rule book um, probably would have knocked it down a couple notches for me. Uh, it was a little difficult to understand what I was supposed to be doing, but then um, like teaching other people how to play and picking it up uh, wasn't difficult. This one has a lot going on. It's probably one of the more difficult roll and writes, but I liked that this one over fleet dice and that I don't miss bonuses that I should have gotten. I felt like the bookkeeping in Fleet was a little much where I'm missing things if I'm not really paying attention. This one, you just automatically start marking off things and you don't mm -hmm. forget if you um, gain something. So I really like this one. It has a few different ways to um, get victory points and there's several paths to victory in this one. So I like that about Florenza. I got a chance to play this and it, Sarah was right. Learning it from Sarah was not difficult. I enjoyed uh, the puzzliness of which buildings do I go for, which paintings, mm -hmm. and I like how the dice work with the mm -hmm. sort of drafting is aspect of it. So my number, what number are we on? Three. Three. Wow. <laughs> my number three is the Adventure Games from Cosmos. Right now they have an English monochrome ink and the dungeon. And these, to me, 
feel like a choose your own adventure. They're not as puzzly as the exit games and you're not destroying anything. Each person has a character that they play and certain interactions will be different based on which character does it. So, oh, do you want the strong character to try to break the door down or the like, really smart character? So you have to make decisions and work cooperatively throughout to go through the adventure, to find the, the items that you need, to puzzle things out. There's a little bit of mystery in both of them. So I really enjoyed the kind of the story aspect and then the cooperative nature of trying to figure out which character is best suited to do something and I told people I shouldn't pull that lever but they insisted and well oh yeah <laughs> it went downhill from there <laughs> number two so number two for me is Silver by Bezier Games I'm, I'm going ahead and just putting them both out here because I think they're amazing um <laughs> I really enjoyed both Silver Amulet and Silver Bullet. I really love the player interaction with this. The trying to figure out who's got what. Do I have something better than Melissa has? And I really, really, really love the surprise moments when you can't remember where things are and you flip two things over and they don't match and you go, what happened? How did this happen? Ah, I, I love the, the outbursts and the, the craziness that can ensue with just being able to mess with other people's cards and trying to remember where things are because of the, you know, the face down card aspect. Um, and that's just a very appealing to me. And I, I, like I said, it's, I think it's a lot to do with the player interaction, trying to read the other players and trying to figure out your own cards. So yeah, this one's an honorable mention again, <laughs> for me. Um, We've had a lot of fun playing it with my family, and also I play a lot on the app, so I've really enjoyed Silver. Mm -hmm. So my number two is actually a game that I haven't gotten the game yet. Um, oh, I, you did another fake one. This is another fake number two. I did this number what? two too. <laughs> on the roller right? uh, <laughs> Is In the Hall of the Mountain King from Burnt Island Games. Uh, it is at port right now and being sent to distributor to get out to Kickstarter backers. So technically, it is a 2019 release and is my number two. But we've still got a few weeks. Yes, so we still have a couple <laughs> weeks to play it. But since I don't have it and backers don't have it, and I actually haven't played the final version, I played a very nice prototype of it. Um, I my other number two, my second number two <laughs> is Goo <Gu> Gong. <laughs> this is from Game Brewer and uh, in the U.S. TMG. Uh, this one is a difficult. Um, worker placement game, uh, action selection game actually. You have a deck of cards that you are placing out on the board and you are replacing your card and gaining that one which you'll use the next round. The Whatever action is on the card is what area of the board you are going to take do that action in and there's lots of different ways to gain points and paths to take in the game and mm -hmm. you can kind of focus on one area but you're going to need to do a little bit in each area I think. So a lot going on in this one. I am very excited to try out the expansion. Yeah, I really enjoyed this one too. I think I just made another honorable mention. <laughs> <laughs> so my number two is Let's see if I can actually get it up here. Okay, uh, Lord of the Rings Journeys in Middle Earth. This is a campaign game. It's similar to Mansions of Madness. It is has an app that is walking you through the story and doing the monsters and really facilitating a lot of the game. Kevin and I have played over 30 games of this. We've gone through the first campaign twice. We have started the second campaign and I really love just playing with a group and seeing how the group reacts to different things. I like the card system that they use instead of dice for resolving mm -hmm. the tests. And I like that your character is progressing and you're building up their deck throughout the game. So when we started the new campaign with our starter decks, it was like, 
what? what? I'm used to having all this powerful stuff. And it was like starting all over again. Um, starting as a commoner. <laughs> yeah, and I've played each campaign with a different character. So each character has different strengths and different things that they're trying to do on Gimli right now. So basically I'm just bashing things with my axe. <laughs> but uh, I really, really enjoyed playing this and the stories and the high moments and the low moments has been a lot of fun. Number one. All right, so number one for me is Tiny Towns. Uh, Sarah has already talked about this on her list, but one of the things I really, really, really love about this is you can just have um, a, a large amount of people playing if they've all got um, games of it. We did a playthrough where we encourage people to pull their versions out and play with us. Um, I love the uh, the thing where you're all having to work from the same information, trying to get it to fit, and it really appeals to me that sometimes you just have to go with something you really don't want, and you have to figure out what you're going to do with it. Um, and I really love the player interaction, the different little goals, all of that thing. Um, it's just, it's really fun. I love that you have different buildings, so each game is a little bit different depending on which buildings you're playing with that round. My number one is Paladins of the West Kingdom. Uh, I've played this one quite a bit for it being a heavier, longer game. It um, has that familiar feel because I've played uh, Shem's other games. I like this one more than Architects because it has less player interaction. Um, I felt like sometimes you could get a little brutal on um, <laughs> had a few unfortunate games with Architects. Uh, this one, you have a, your own board. You have to plan ahead on what you're going to do for placing your workers out. You have the Paladin deck that those cards will come back because you're going to put one on top for next time. So you may choose it next time. One goes on the bottom of your deck. So later rounds, you will see that card again. So you need to think about that as well. Uh, it just is a wonderful worker placement game that I have very much enjoyed this year getting to the table. This one probably would have been on my list if I had played it some more. I'd only played it once. So it's definitely honorable mention. <laughs> I have not been keeping track of how many of those are. But, you know, it's probably like 11 through 15. Yeah. Or 20, maybe. Yeah, probably. <laughs> so my number one is the Taverns of Tiefenthal. And in the United States, it's brought by North Star Games. This is a deck building and dice drafting game. And those are two things that I really love in games. I also like that the tavern is basically a puzzle yeah. and it has pieces that you physically flip over when you upgrade. Mm -hmm. So that's a fun tactile experience. Now I've always played with the modules basically all of the modules in there. So I've never played the vanilla version of the game and I think it really stands out with all of the modules because I like the different ways that you can score points, the different paths to victory, and the asymmetric nature when you use all the modules. Mm -hmm. And I really, really enjoyed playing this one. I finally got to try it out last night and I do have to say, had I played a couple more times, this one also would have made my list. So definitely an honorable mention. All right, so that wraps up the ladies top 10 2019 games. Okay, so I still have some more honorable mentions that didn't make it in. So Noctiluca is a interesting lightweight dice game. We have Obscurio, kind of like Obscurium with a traitor. Really enjoyed that one. Colors of Paris. Kevin talked about that one a lot in his video, but that's a great worker placement. Number two on my list is not this one, so I need to find it. Sorry. <laughs> I put it there because I was like, oh, it'll be next. And then I was like, didn't even think about the one I needed this round. Sorry. 
<laughs> so I have Clip Cut Parks. That was probably a little further down on my list, but super fun, innovative game. Honga, I love playing with my kids. I love the puzzle of planet. Like we could just keep going and keep going. <laughs> so, I didn't know we were doing this. So uh, I didn't have anything prepared. Well, I also have Space Gate Odyssey. It has really cool, like translucent meeples. And then of course there's Sierra West with all of its modules. And um, I could probably find some more. Maybe. <laughs>